Hey everyone and welcome to another video on high yield screening guidelines. According to the CDC, there are right now in the United States 13 million people infected with tuberculosis. So let's see how do we screen for TB and how do we assess the results from the screening tests. Coming up next. Alright, so how do we screen for TB? And by screen I mean that we are looking for active infection in patients who are symptomatic or we are trying to rule out or to confirm a latent TB infection in patients who are asymptomatic. And also another thing worth mentioning is that the TB screening test is not a routine test. We screen routinely only the healthcare personnel before the beginning of their employment. We have two types of TB screening tests. The first one is a skin test, it's called the Mantu tuberculin skin test. And the second one is a blood test, it's called the IGRAS test, the interferon gamma releasing assays. And here we have two FDA approved tests, the quantiferon GOAT and the T-SPOT, which we'll discuss in a bit. But before that, I would like to remind you that both these tests are looking for type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, which is also called delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. And as you might remember, it's mediated by antigen specific effector T cells. This re hypersensitivity reaction in the first test it's happening in vivo in the patient itself, whereas in the blood test it's happening in vitro, as I will explain this in a bit. And also something very important worth mentioning is that both these tests cannot differentiate between active versus latent TB infection. The first test that we have is the Mantu tuberculin skin test. It uses tuberculin purified protein derivative, which we actually inject intradermally into the volar part of the forearm. 48 to 72 hours later, we are looking for induration as a sign of delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. And by induration, I mean that the skin should be raised, it should be a little bump there, not just red, as we know that just reddening of the skin is called erythema. And we'll discuss in a bit how do we interpret the size of this induration. In the interferon gamma releasing assay tests, what we are doing is we take blood from the patient and we mix it with specific isolated tuberculosis antigens, called the ESAT6 and the CFP10, whereas here we use the PPD in the skin test. And again, we are looking for the same type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Whereas in this one, this reaction is happening in vitro because you have taken the blood outside of the patient. Whereas in the skin test, it's happening in vivo because the reaction is happening in the patient's arm. And again, what we are looking for is releasing of interferon gamma from the patient's T cells that have already been in contact with TB infection. And we have two FDA approved IGRAS tests. The first one is the quantiferon GO test, which gives you positive or negative result based on numbers. And the other one is called the T-spot test, where you actually have to count dots. The advantages of the blood test compared to the skin test is that the IGRAS test gives you a result within 24 hours. They also do not give false positive results in patients who have received the TB BCG vaccine. They are also preferred in patients who are not expected to return to the clinic to read the PPD skin test results. The disadvantages include the cost because as they are relatively new tests they are still very expensive and also they are not used in children less than 5 years of age. As we said, we do not routinely screen for TB, but according to the 2017 recommendations by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention and the Infectious Disease Society of America and the American Thoracic Society, we have to test for TB the following groups of people. The first one is the people who are at increased risk of new TB infection and the second group is the people who are at increased risk of latent TB infection reactivation. So let's see which TB test do we use in each group. So let's see who is at increased risk of developing new TB infection. First, these are the close contacts of patients untreated for acute respiratory TB. And by close contacts, I mean that they have to be in contact with the TB patient for at least four hours a week. The preferred method of testing is the tuberculin skin test. And if the first one, the first test is negative, we have to confirm it with an IGRA test eight weeks later. The other group of people are the healthcare personnel. 
In them, we perform pre-exposure baseline tests before they start their employment and then we have to test them annually for TB. And uh, the guidelines recommend either the tuberculin skin test or the IGRA test. But if you choose to start with the tuberculin skin test and the first one is negative, you might consider repeating it in one to four weeks. The patients who are at increased risk of late TB infection reactivation are divided into three separate groups. The ones who have high risk of reactivation, intermediate and low risk of reactivation. The patients at the high risk include those who are AIDS positive, HIV positive, who have undergone some sort of transplantation and are on immunosuppressant therapy, who have silicosis, who have CKD and requiring hemodialysis, who have carcinoma of the head and neck, who have been infected with TB less than two years ago, who are on TNF-alpha inhibitors therapy and who have abnormal chest x-ray with apical fibronodular changes which is suggestive of healed tuberculosis. So in these patients we can either perform the skin test, the TST or the blood test, the IGRA. But remember if you choose to perform the dual strategy, basically TST followed by IGRA or IGRA followed by TST, Remember to perform the IGRA test at least three days after you perform the TST test so you do not boost the IGRA reaction. The patients at intermediate risk of reactivating latent TB infection are the ones who are on corticosteroid therapy, who have diabetes mellitus all types, who have been infected with TB less than four years of age, who have BMI less than 20, who have chest x-ray with solitary granuloma and the devoted smokers at least one pack a day. In these patients, we prefer to perform IGRA test. And the low risk patients are the ones who have no risk factors and normal chest x-ray. Here you can choose to perform either the IGRA test or the skin test. And in order to confirm latent TB infection in them, both tests must be positive. Let's see how do we interpret the PPD skin test now. It is very high yield for all steps. As we said, we have to measure the duration 48 to 72 hours later. And according to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, a positive result is in duration equal or more than 5 mm in the following patients who are HIV positive, who have been in recent TB contact, who have undergone some sort of transplantation and are immunosuppressed or in, on immunosuppressant therapy, who have chest X-ray showing fibrotic changes, and who are on chronic corticosteroid therapy at least more than four weeks. The PPD skin test is considered positive when the induration is equal or more than 10 mm in the following patients. The immigrants which have arrived in the country less than five years ago, IV drug users, residents or workers in prisons, shelters, nursing homes and hospitals, people who are suffering from diabetes mellitus or blood cancer, people who are using alcohol and are current smokers, and children less than five years of age. And in patients without risk factors, the PPD skin test is positive if the induration is equal or more than 15 millimeters. If the initial PPD test is negative, and this is the first time the patient is being tested for TB, you have to perform the PPD again in another two weeks. If it's negative, you don't have to do anything. But if it's positive, you have to perform chest x-ray. The same goes for patients who have initial positive PPD test. Perform chest x-ray. If it's negative, you have diagnosed latent TB infection. But if it's positive, you have to perform more tests. In kids, you can perform gastric lavage sample. And in adults, you can perform sputum smear and stain it for acid fast bacilli. Now, if these tests are positive, you have confirmed negative TB infection. But if they are negative, you can again perform more tests, like culture and nucleate acid base test. And if these tests are positive, again you have diagnosed active TB infection. And let's just go quickly over the treatment of TB. So if you diagnose active TB infection, you have to treat them with the popular mnemonic RIPE. Rifampin, isoniazide for the first six months and then pyrazinamide and entambutol for the first two months. Now if you diagnose latent TB infection, you have 
three options. You can either start them on INH, which is isoniazide, and please don't forget the B6 vitamin, the pyridoxine, so you can prevent peripheral neuropathy as a side effect of isoniazide for six to nine months. Or you can put them on rifampin for four months, or you can start them on isoniazide and rifapentin for three months under a doctor's supervision. And remember that the last option is not recommended for HIV positive patients. And this is the end of our TB screening guidelines video. Everything I shared with you today is super super high yield. So try to remember as much as possible so you can score super high on your tests. Thank you very much for watching, good luck everyone and see you on the next video.